Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on determining the nth term formula of a quadratic sequence. So we want to find the nth term formula of this. And what I mean by that is that given a particular position in the sequence, let's say I want the fourth term, I can plug the four into my formula to work out the fourth term of 35, for example, or I could work out what the hundredth term is using my formula. And here are the steps. So we want to first determine the second difference, and we'll see what that means in a second. Let's look at the difference between terms. Well, we can see that's going up by 6, that's going up by 10, that's going up by 14, etc. And then if we look at the difference of the difference, so this difference is going up by 4, that's going up by 4 again. Oh, can you see that this difference of the difference, known as the second difference, is remaining the same? And if you have that, then we have what's known as a quadratic sequence. And it's called a quadratic sequence because the formula we're going to get is a quadratic expression. Now, we've determined the second difference. We've done step one. So we're going to start our formula for our nth term expression as something n squared, where we halve that second difference. So we halve this number and half of 4 is 2. So we're therefore going to start our formula with 2 and then we shove it on front of n squared. Now I like to draw a line like this and we're going to put our sequence here. So if our formula was 2n squared, what would be the first term of our formula? Well, it would be 2 times 1 squared. Now, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. So the first term of our formula would be 2. What would the second term be? Well, it would be 2 times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4 times by 2 is 8. By the way, 2n squared doesn't mean 2n squared, because if you did 2 times 2, which is 4, and then squared it, you'd have 16. We actually want two lots of n squared. Now, what would be the third term in our sequence? Because this is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term. If n was 3, 2 times 3 squared, 2 times 9 is 18, and that will probably do. Now, we can see that 2n squared is giving us a sequence to 8, 18. Well, that's not right. We want 5, 11, 21. So we need some kind of adjustment, and we need to work out what this adjustment is. So the next row in our table, I'm going to write here to add, and that's our adjustment, what we need to add on to our current sequence to fix it so we get the sequence that we want. What do we have to do to 2 to get to the correct term of 5? Well, we need to add 3, don't we? What do we need to add to 8 to get to 11? Well, we need to add 3 don't we? What do we need to add to 18 to get to 21? We need to add 3. So it seems that if we start with 2n squared as our sequence and we add on 3, then we will have the right sequence. So it's 2n squared, add on 3. So that is our formula there. And if we wanted to find, for example, the hundredth term, we can now use our formula because we just sub in the n as 100 into this formula. It would be 2 times 100 squared plus 3, which would be 2 times 10,000, plus 3, and that's 20,000 and 3. So we've managed to find the hundredth term of this sequence without having to write out all 100 terms. What about this next one? So again, we determine the second difference. Well, the difference here is 11. The difference here is 17. And let's just write one more. The difference here is 23. And then let's look at the difference of the difference. Well, this difference is going up by 6. This difference is going up by 6. OK, we have a second difference of 6. It is a quadratic sequence. So we halve that number of 6, so it's 3. And then we shove that on front of an n squared. So that's what our formula is going to start with. So the next step is to work out what that sequence is. Well, 3 times 1 squared. You could add an extra row if you want for n. n is the position of the term, so this is the first term, so n is 1, n is 2. But you don't have to write that if you can do it in your head. So 3 times 1 squared is 3. 3 times 2 squared, that's 3 times 4, which is 12. 3 times 3 squared, that's 3 times 9, which is 27. 3 terms will do, that'll be enough. Now again, look, 3, 12, 27, that doesn't give us the correct sequence. We want 4, 15, 32. So we need our to add row again with working out our adjustment. So what do we need to add on to 3 to get to 4? Well, we need an extra 1. What do we add 
on to 12 to get to 15? Well, we need an extra 3. What do we have to add on to 27 to get the correct term of 32? We need to add on 5. And if this was to go on, we'd have to next add 7, etc. So, we've got 3n squared, and then we want to add on whatever this sequence is. Now, before it was easy, because that's just 3, so we're just adding on 3. But this time, this is not the same number. So what you do is, in isolation, we're going to work out what's the formula for that sequence. So if I just cover everything else up, just forget everything you've done so far. Think, if I had 1, 3, 5, 7, what's the formula for that sequence? Well, we can see it's going up by 2 each time. And in a previous video, we saw this is something called an arithmetic sequence, where your first difference, like the, just the difference between these terms, stays the same. And if it's 2, do you remember that you would just take that 2 and shove it in front of an n? Now, if we wanted the first term of this sequence, 2n, what would it be? Well, it would be 2 times 1, which is 2. But we actually want 1, so we minus 1. Let's just check that for the next one. If you want the second term, it would be 2 times 2, which is 4 minus 1 is 3, and that definitely works. So we started with 3n squared, and we added on this sequence here, which was 2n minus 1, and that therefore is the final answer.